support the show, go over to our support store and get some awesome looking clothing. We got rock on hats, rock on shirts. The rock on hats are embroidered. Get your exclusive merchandise now. Rock on. Era begins again. What's up, everyone? How you doing? Oh, Hollywood is feeling it today. Holy cow, I haven't slept. Yes, Bio Jesus sent me to see him. If you watch that video on how to buy from a dispensary, you seen what I got? Yes, I partaked. It was a vicious cycle, I tell you. A vicious cycle. It kept me going and going and going again. You know what? I didn't only see Jesus. I seen the Father. And then I went past the Father and he said, Hey, where you going? That's how high I was, man. After this show, it's time to take a shower and wash the dirty balls. Get changed. Because, boy, yes. That was a long road travel, man. I figured I was back in the 80s, man. I was watching Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Then I went on to Beavis and Butthead. Yes, Beavis and Butthead, by the way, has a, it's going to be continuing, man. I guess uh, Judge said uh, he's going to participate. But yeah, watching quite a bit of Beavis and Butthead. So don't ever let the cycle continue. It'll wear you out, man. Uh, <laughs> today's show, we have a lot of information about the, some stories going out about the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club, both overseas and here. And there's one story in particular that's like, really? You're kidding me, right? It shows you the media bias. The media bias in this one article and that article is the exact reason why people do not trust media they like spinning everything to their advantage and that includes what i seen today an abomination of what i seen today and this is my monologue right here what in the hell is going on with this damn country What's going on? I ask you, it's a simple question. You know, during my uh, highness, I was sitting there watching, you know, you know, that bar uh, thing in front of uh, Congress, the Judiciary Committee. And I know some of you buttheads out there do not like politics, but this is something that needs to be said. Because it don't even, you know, it's not only affecting citizens, but bikers. This is how bad it is getting in this country. You had fat boy Nadler, and you had all these other Democrats up there trying to deny, deny, even though there's video evidence, Jim Jordan played it right before the start. See, he slipped it in because he knew the Democrats' plan to deny, deny, deny. They're denying that there is riots all over this country. They are saying that it is peaceful protests. We have elected officials who are siding with communism and Marxism and socialism. This country is in serious, serious trouble. You, I swear, go take a look at all the replays. I watch it on Right Side uh, Broadcasting on YouTube. And I was just disgusted. I was thrown up. I was like, this country's been in so many wars to protect our land. And for people to actually back politicians that lean so far towards communism and Marxism and all that crap, you're pathetic. You really are. And I'll say it right on this program now. You are pathetic. For voting for these type of peoples you're talking let's talk biker rights here for a minute we all know that biker rights is a real important issue and then you'll have people come out well you're supporting this guy and he's been doing this with this attorney general you are schlocks you cannot even compare to what's gonna happen if you vote these people in you'd be lucky to have a patch 
You'd be lucky to ride a bike in peace. Communism and socialism does not work. It's been a disaster since its founding. Since its founding. But you have politicians out in Portland right now who are saying, well, these are peaceful protests while their citizens and their businesses are burning down. And on national TV today, they try to deny it. Deny it. Pitiful. What's it going to take for Americans to stand up and say enough is a damn enough? Everybody should have known that this was going to happen when you voted for these idiots in 2018. But hey, we don't like Orange Man. That's the reason to vote for these damn people? Are you kidding me? Look at the damn records, man. I don't care if you don't like this one. But damn, man, he's a lot better than the one, uh, you know, going over there making millions of dollars overseas, ain't he? They are playing downright Chicago politics. And the people that are voting for him, you are sheep and you are falling for it. How can you support anybody who says point blank to your face, well, those are peaceful protests? While you're looking over there and you see the damn city burning down. Or the one reporter that was standing in front of the federal courthouse. And yeah, bikers don't like federal courthouses. But, you know, let's be honest for a minute here. Standing in front of a federal courthouse, the damn thing on fire. And the guy claims, well, it's peaceful protest right on national TV. The media... And that party is working hand to hand to destroy this company or country. What you know as being American, your rights right now are under attack. Did you know there was a group of ex war officers, uh, ex politicians, ex professors, all that good stuff? They got together and ran scenarios for this election year. And none of them came out good. Civil unrest. What I'm saying is you better get prepared. You got mail-in ballots. Now, they're going to say, well, you know, this person doesn't. No, it is totally two different types of deals. And people are too stupid to realize that. You got regular mail-in ballots. Those are the ones you got to get certified that you're the person, the whole nine yards. And I'm actually going to show you one of these mail-in ballots because guess what? Illinois is doing it. So when they send my ballot, I'm not going to use it, but I'm going to show you it. You do, an Amsterdam ballot is not the damn same. And this is, these liars, it just infuriates me. Try to pass it off as, oh, you're trying to take away the vote, or you're trying to suppress minorities. Well, I'm sorry to tell you, people ain't that damn stupid, at least the people I know. This is a power grab. If you think freaking China and Russia and North Korea are so great, here's what I suggest to you if you like them form of governments. Pack up and get your ass out. Get your ass out if you don't like this country. Because most of the times, the ones that don't like it are the ones who never did anything for it. They think it's their right to cry and freaking whine about everything that's going on while they sit on a couch. I can contend a lot of bikers are that way. I always say, join ABA, join MRF, you know, support NCOM. Even if it's just sending in dues. But do most people do it? Hell no. But they'll be the first ones to complain when something goes down with them. The first time they get pulled over and profiled for wearing a damn hog patch. They'll sit there crying and whine. But what, be what happened before? Why couldn't you support nothing? Now you're bitching? Now you see what everybody else sees? That's the world we live in. People want other people to fight. 
They don't want to do the fighting. But when it comes to this country, you better damn well get ready to fight. Because it's going to hell right now. Watching that today, again, was an abomination. All the hundreds of thousands of soldiers that gave their lives for this country are roaming over in their grave today. It's sickening. You should be out there emailing, calling these bastards, and letting them know. I do it all the damn time. Also, before I uh, turn over to the news goodbye. segment, oh, I hate hitting the wrong buttons all the damn time. Uh, anyway, before I go to that news segment, the radio station, yeah, we're getting a lot of interest, a lot of interested in people uh, hosting their own shows on the platform. That's awesome. A lot of awesome ideals out there. I can't wait to get this going. But now let's go to the news. To Mirage News. This has to do with overseeing eyes. You guys getting all foolish over there, man, again. Nah, I'm just kidding. Uh, a police uh, charge a man after assault of a fellow inmate. Park Leah, an associate of the Hells Angels Outlaw Motorcycle Gang. Now, let's, let's just start off on that first, man. And this has to do with all clubs. Do you ever notice... And this is the argument I always make about pop-up clubs going out and causing trouble. The citizens do not know the difference between that club and a major club. Well, I guess all you have to do is be an associate or a supporter. And all of a sudden, the club you're supporting is the one that gets in the news. And that's what happens here. Has been charged after a fellow inmate at a Western Sydney Correctional Facility was found with significant injuries last month. On Tuesday, uh, 30th of June, police received reports that a 51-year-old man was assaulted in a cell at a correctional center in Park Lea. Following extensive inquiries, here we go, Strike Force Raptor detective you guys are schmucks you know what i wish i'd get one of them on the freaking interview with me i've actually sent inquiries but they told me to go uh f myself uh i tear them up in a heartbeat jackhammer times what i say detectives attended a correctional facility in silverwater and arrested a 22 year old man on wednesday 23 july uh, he was charged with assault occasion uh actual bodily harm Police will allege in court that the man assaulted his fellow inmate in a cell, resulting in that man sustaining multiple injuries to the face and neck. The 22-year-old was refused bail and appeared at a local court via a video link where he was formally bail refused. Uh, now here's what I don't get. What's the Hell's Angels have to do with this? What do they got to do with this? Strike Force Raptor was established in 2009 and conducts proactive investigations and intelligent-based high-impact police operations. <laughs> That's just another fancy word for saying busybodies. Uh, to prevent and disrupt conflicts and dismantle any network engaged in serious organized crime. Uh, again. Did they say uh, how, why, whatever, how he was, uh, you know, connected to the uh, Hells Angels? It don't say that in here. It just says an associate of the Hells Angels outlaw motorcycle gang has been charged. That's all it says. It does not say anything else. Putzes. Okay, here we go. Uh, we're going to bring it back to the United States. 19 News. Uh, this has to do with what we covered in the last segment, uh, Hells Angels and Mongols. Uh, one killed, one stabbed in Hells Angels and Mongols turf war at a Northeast Ohio gas station. I guess there's a turf war there. Uh, I don't think so because one of them don't have a chapter there or if they do it's not been known yet uh, But that's sensationalism of the media 
John Fuller, 53, was shot and later died after the gas station brawl. If you're on Spotify and all that stuff, you can see uh, the picture of the victim uh, by Dan DeRuz. Uh, Saturday evening, a man was shot to death after another was stabbed at the Shell gas station on Granger and Canal Roads in Valley View. According to Valley View Police uh, Chief David Nero, I wonder if he's uh, any relations to that idiot uh, Robert De Niro. I don't like that guy. And boy, did he get a kick in the balls, man. He had to go to court. Uh, the wife wants $100,000 credit cards each uh, month. And boy, well, I can't make any money. I can't. <laughs> you freaking Hollywood elite putzes. Uh, the two clashed in the pump area of the gas station, which resulted in the death of 53-year-old John Fuller. According to the county medical examiner's office, Fuller was treated at Metro Health Medical Center, but did not survive. Early uh, indications suggest that this tor turf war between the rival biker clubs. Nero said all his department dash cam video and surveillance from the shell station was turned over to the Ohio Bureau of Criminal Investigation, who now leads the investigation. Uh, they said they did call in ATF for assistance and all that stuff. Uh, so, and uh, here's a picture of them holding a, a baby. Uh, so if you want to check it out, come check it out. Let's go to the next one. Here is a, a funny one. This is the one I was talking about. How... They sensationalize clubs. Now, everybody knows about the protests in Minneapolis and how that AutoZone went up. Well, Umbrella Man was a Hells Angels biker inciting racial unrest. This by Mike Mullen. Mike Mullen. <laughs> I can call you a lot worse. Anyway, the video of a mistake, and there is a video I'm going to show you. Uh... Video of a mysterious man smashing up windows at a Lake Street auto zone during George Floyd protests went massively viral and led to much speculation about the identity and motives of Umbrella Man. The most popular notion asserted that the guy uh, reducing glass the shards were for no clear reason was a cop. And later on, SLU zeroed in on a single St. Paul Police Department officer. That department later worked to debunk this theory by giving the SPPD cop in question a surveillance video alibi. The suspicion of an outside aggregator come to make protesters look bad or incite a more destructive mood might still turn out to be correct. A search warrant filed this week indicates the prime suspect for the Umbrella Man is a Hells Angel biker, and this is what pisses me off right here. And associated with the Aryan Cowboy Brotherhood guys who prowled downtown Stillwater late last month. What do they have to do with anything? Now you're tying another motorcycle club. Why? Because this broad said, oh, they're, they're scary. They may, you know what? I get sick and tired of snowflakes. But worse, I get sick and tired of media pulling this kind of crap. Umbrella Man is a Hell's Angel biker and associated with the Aryan Cowboy Brotherhood. Well, if you wanted to do it correctly and say this, well, maybe you would want to say, well, the Aryan Cowboy Brotherhood is associated with the Hells Angels. But, personally, there ain't no need to even bring them up. You brought them up because that was a story. You got this link to another story, so people just click, 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 like a bunch of dummies. No reason this should be in here. The Star Tribune reports on the affidavit of a Minneapolis Police Department arson investigator, which says the incineration of that auto zone was, quote, the first fire that set off a string of fires and looting throughout the precinct and the rest of the city. But today I thought the Democrats said these were peaceful protests. That's what they said. This don't sound peaceful. A string 
of fires and looting. The strip uh, didn't identify the subject of in the Warren site that he has yet to be charged with the crime. Uh, he was also uh, tagged the building with free shit for everyone zone before bashing its windows with a sledgehammer. Let's take a look here. And this one is on YouTube. He's going around, it looks like a glass breaker, just breaking windows out like a putz. Guys like that are part of the problem with this stuff. Oh, I'm, 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 I zoomed in. I'll, I'll zoom out a little bit. Those cops will come for you if you're pulling that crap. And that's under Minneapolis Riot. It's AutoZone window smashed on YouTube. Uh, later that night, Calvin Horton was shot and killed allegedly by John Repo, the owner of a Lake Street pawn shop who was arrested but was not charged. Only last week, another body was found at another pawn shop burned down during the riots. Again, I thought they were peaceful. The investigators spent innumerable hours watching social media and uh, Streaming video feeds trying to track Umbrella Man. Last week, a tip was emailed to the department about the man, 32. He's a member of the Hells Angel gang, the emailer wrote. Oh, okay. This is how you're saying that he's a member of the Hells Angels? By an email from an anonymous source? You're kidding me. What kind of reporting is that? Men wearing Hells Angel gear were spotted socializing and strolling the streets in Stillwater about a month ago when their president, along with that of the members of the Aryan Cowboy Brotherhood, here it is again, they had a second time they had to say this, menaced a Muslim woman out eating with her child. Boo hoo! She probably seen her patches because they, you know, the picture was from behind. Oh my god, I'm scared! And the emailer wrote, he was looking to sow discard and racial unrest. My god, have I never seen more freaking worse. This reporting is garbage. Garbage. You may. Uh, Warren, on Brother Man was a Hells Angel biker. Are you cra- you're kidding me, right? Off an email. This is why people do not trust you punks. Asses. Now let's go to a good story about motorcycle clubs here. I gotta calm down, my blood's going. I gotta smoke again. <laughs> what am I saying? I gotta take a freaking shower first. Uh, motorcycle club with Brockton Quincy Ties helps men maintain sobriety, the enterprise. This by Anastasia Lennon. Quote, my whole life I was raising hell and now I'm doing something a little different, said Ed Bullio, uh, Bullio, founder of the Last Chance Motorcycle Club. Rock on. There's a picture of their uh, patches again. If you guys know if you're on the radio and I'm talking about a picture or a video, come on over and check it out. Ed Bullio started drinking when he was 12 years old. It's about the time I started smoking the 420. He said by age 13 he was using other substances and his early uh, drug use snowballed into a life largely spent drinking and partying. Uh, about three years ago he decided he had enough. Rock and roll, man. Rock and roll. I had that uh, moment in 97. One day I just said I needed to clean up and get my head on straight, said the 49-year-old Brockton man. But I was getting bored. I found myself not being around anybody. It was kind of like the old saying, if you want to find out who your real friends are, quit drinking. Very freaking well said. A motorcycle enthusiast, Bullio ultimately founded a motorcycle club extensively for sober men called the Last Chance Motorcycle Club. Bullio says he was the sole member of the club for a time. He didn't know anyone else in the clean and sober community, but he soon met Tom Ventorsi of Quincy, who helped expand membership. Quote, it basically started to help other alcoholics and drug users in recovery get a little more out of life and find a niche where they belonged. 
He's been sober since 1986. Rock on. Anybody that reaches out, whether they ride in the club and have a patch or want to ride or just hang out, or are sober and just need someone to talk to, we're there. For the club patch, Bullio borrowed artwork by cartoonist Sean Dickerson a, of a skull riding a motorcycle and added a coffin behind it. The final image depicts a rider ripping out of his coffin for the last chance at living. We have a club saying, back from the dead. Bullio said, before we were dead because of alcohol or drugs, now we're really alive. Uh, the club's primary goal is to promote biking, brotherhood, and sobriety, and it's not meant as a replacement for Alcoholics or Narcotics Anonymous. Uh, to get a full patch, bikers need to have been sober for at least one year, otherwise members are considered a prospect. Rock and roll, man. That's uh, good stuff there. You know, clean and sober clubs are kick-ass clubs. They really are, man. You know, they, uh, you know, fun the ride with and stuff and uh, behind you just as much as somebody else would be. Corey Grass, wall of shame. Yes, we have two. And boy, you're not going to believe these. Uh, well, yeah, you probably are. Uh, Ronart Park public safety officer arrested on suspicion of embezzlement. <laughs> you don't say. Nashley Chavez, the press Democrat. Ugh, I hate that name. A Ronart Park uh, police officer was arrested Monday on suspicion of embezzling money from the department's police union. He thought he was Jimmy Hoffa, baby. Where he served as a former treasurer over a four-year period, David Sittig Watson, you are now in choreographs wall of shame, buddy. Turned himself in to the Sonoma County Sheriff's Office at around noon Monday. He was booked into the uh, Sonoma County Jail on a single count of felony grand theft by embezzlement and released later that afternoon on $5,000 bail. The investigation began in February uh, when the Renart uh, Public uh, or Park Public Safety Director Tim Mottos asked the Sheriff's Office to start a financial crimes investigation into the possible theft of money from the police union. Uh, the investigators then submitted their findings to the uh, Attorney General's Office, uh, Sonoma uh, County, which filed charges against them and issued warrant for his arrest. Hmm, rock and mo. Yes, you are in the wall of shame there, buddy. Hey, you got any money you can pass around, by the way? Help a uh, brother out, what I say. Anyway, one more uh, wall of shame. Uh, sad state of affairs, this one. You know, the, we always have them one type of crimes that they're always in, man. It's always the sexual stuff. And uh, you know what? You're sick puppies, you know, going after kids. Uh, Manassas police officer on paid leave following arrest for possession. Yes, you got this one right. Of child pornography. Sad state of affairs. Uh, felony possession of child pornography, according to the spokesman for Manassas City Police Department. The officer who has been relieved of his duties. Well, <laughs> that's a no-brainer. What? Wait. Unless you're down south where you have to have a you know, lead-up to dismissal. Yeah, that's that one story we covered. Uh, whose job title was first line command level evening shit. Oh, he's a shift supervisor. <laughs> Great. Bumbera is currently, and he is now in the wall of shame, Wayne Bumbera. Hopefully they go medieval on you in the joint. Is currently on administrative uh, paid leave and will remain on the status during the course of the investigation. Paid leave. Are you kidding me? Paid leave. <laughs> Think about that. Uh, being conducted by the Virginia State Police and during the administrative internal investigation. Being conducted in an expedited manner by the Manassas City Police Department. He was arrested in connection with an investigation conducted by the Virginia State Police Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force, which is ongoing. Bombera is scheduled to appear in court for an arraignment hearing on August 6. The news release did not include information about Bombera's history with the City of Manassas Police Department, how long he was employed there, or whether he had been subject to previous internal investigations. Hmm. 
He called the officer's arrest a breach of trust and acutely tragic. Yeah, uh huh. He's a freaking. Anyway, let's go to my mm -hmm, final thoughts. Carrie here from Bagger Syndicate Cycles. Just to let you know about the place that has the craziest hats on the market. Apparel that's based all upon bikers, baggers, and brotherhood. And ladies, we didn't forget about you either. Between tank tops and baby doll tees, we have it all. Now just go to BaggerSyndicateCycles.com and check it out. Mwah. Okay, my final thoughts. Yeah, I know my opening monologue was quite long. And you know what? I'm starting to feel really frustrated. Not only about these politicians, but the people that support them. It's like, open your eyes. They're lying to you. And I know all politicians lie, but this is in your face, man. They're not even trying to cover up their lies. To say there ain't violent stuff going on? Are, you're kidding me, right? You're kidding me. And what's worse... The people that are supposed to hold them accountable, the media, lies is just as much as they do. We have seen a lot of examples of that one today. Two articles. The first one. All it said was the guy was a Hells Angel uh, associate. Okay, where's the proof? Show us why he was a Hells Angel associate. Don't do it just to sell stuff. Or to get your clicks to your other stories. Show people a well-written, fact-based article. Then, the one from Minneapolis. My God, you titled an article off an email that you received from an unidentified person? Are you, you're kidding me, right? That is the worst reporting I've seen in a very damn long time. Again, you wonder why people don't trust you. Everybody sees the blatant bias that you people are pulling. How the hell do you even call yourselves news reporters? Or that news organizations? You're not supposed to have a motive. You're supposed to present the facts and let the people decide. You're breaking every damn rule of journalism 101. You're not out there to push your opinions. And you're sure to hell ain't out there to push conspiracy theories. I cannot believe you titled that article off of an email sent to you. Did they see him wearing support merchandise? That's why I believe, you know what, you don't sell support merchandise to people you don't know, but that's a different story. That's a different, uh, you know, video talking point and stuff like that. Even if they're wearing it, they can get it off the internet. How does that involve the club? Any club I'm talking about. I'm just not talking about this incident in uh, Minneapolis. Then to tie them to some story... That came out because that one woman claimed she was being harassed by the Aryan Cowboys. And that they were associated with the Hells, or the Hells Angels were associated with them, except, you know, it's the other way around. What kind of nonsense is that? Yeah, I guess I'm getting a little grumpy in my old age, or I haven't slept, man. You know, I'm coming off the buzz. But, uh, you know... Facts are facts. You can see right through what you people are doing. You, I seen right through what uh, these idiots were doing during this hearing. Do I support what's going on with profile? And no, I don't. But I do believe in being truthful when you're going after a situation. You people were just rambling off your BS, not even letting the guy answer any questions, just showing your asses. Like the American people are going to believe you. Hey, Tennessee, what's up with you electing that one freaking guy? Cohen, I think it is. You guys are pathetic in that district. Pathetic. You're pathetic down in Texas, Sarah Jackson Lee. You, I don't even want to go into that one, what I call her. 
But these are the same people that make the laws. And if you think that bikers won't be affected, you're kidding yourself. Because once they do the power grab, that's all it's up to, man. They're going to rechange this whole society. That's what's going to happen. And if you think I'm overstating it, just look at what they want to do in the Senate if they take it over. They want to get rid of the, the 60 uh, threshold filibuster. That's been around since Jefferson. Yeah, they want to get rid of that. That way they can do whatever they want. Just think if you've lost somebody who was a vet in a war. Family member, brother, sister, whatever it may be. How do you feel about all this going on right now? How do you feel about the media who cries First Amendment this, First Amendment that? How do you feel about them people uh, being in a propaganda machine instead of giving you facts? All I have to say is, if you don't think it's going to affect bikers like I said earlier, just look at the stories. Look at how those two stories were written. It's ridiculous. Ridiculous. Anyway, don't forget to go visit us on Spotify, iTunes. If you're interested in a radio show, just let me know. Uh, September 1st, Motorcycle Madhouse Biker Radio is going to be coming out. I think you're going to love it, man. Old freaking rockabilly, blues, and hard rock, man. That's going to be the main focus. Yeah, we might throw some 50s uh, oldies in there late at night. We'll see. We'll see. There's also talk radio. If you own, uh, if you're doing a biker podcast, you want to get on the show, get more uh, exposure, go ahead and info at insanethrottlebikernews.com. With that, I'll talk to you later. It's time for Hollywood. Go take a bath, man, or a shower or something, man. Been up, uh, what is it, 26, 27 hours? I got to go to bed. Talk to you guys later. I said goodbye, vamos, adios, ciao, so long, get your hat down. Don't forget to go go over to to HarleyLiberty.com. Get all your motorcycle club news. What's happening in the scene? We have a new article or articles every single day over at HarleyLiberty.com. And don't forget the sister site, BikerLifestyleMagazine.com. If you're into all that kind of manufacturer motorcycle and news, Motorcycle rallies and bikers help in the community. Motorcycle club editorials and more. And don't forget to visit us on Facebook. Get involved in the conversation. Watch videos done on Motorcycle Madhouse and more. Also, we have Instagram. Yes, Instagram. We have material that is not seen anywhere else. So don't forget, get on our platforms, check out your daily biker news. Rock on! Hey guys, this is Kara from Bagger Syndicate Cycles. I just want to let you know about a place where you can get the greatest apparel, top of the notch, all about baggers, bikers, and brotherhood. And ladies, don't you worry, we didn't forget about you. Check it out at baggersyndicatecycles.com. Yo show is now available on Spotify and all major platforms including iHeartRadio, iTunes, Stitcher, and more. Don't forget to become a subscriber on any one of these platforms so you can be notified right away when our weekly episode is uploaded so you never miss an episode. Hi, this is James Hollywood Machikari. Join our YouTube channel and get motorcycle madhouse and tons of videos related to the bikers. Join now by subscribing for free and become part of the crowd today. Always free and always entertaining. Don't forget to visit us at www.harleyliberty.com for your daily biker news. Rock on!